guys, I'm here with Tom Mason, owner of Power Play Power Boats, and we have an absolutely gorgeous 30 right behind me. And one thing we have not done yet, Tom, is check out what you have underneath the hood. Now, a lot of you guys out there ask us, you know, about the quality of the build, what goes underneath, how does it look? We're gonna go ahead and show you, so Tom's gonna be kind enough to give us a tour. So Tom, what do we have here behind us? Uh, 30 foot deck, gas tanks are in it, but none of the plumbing or any of the other ingredients are in place yet. But it'll okay. give people an idea of what's actually below the deck, what they're stepping on and they never get to see. So I'm hoping this will let people get a, have an idea. All right, let's go get it done. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start here at the bow. Tom, what do we have going on here? It looks like the fuel lines. Explain what you, what the tactic was here. What we tried to do, Alan, was we tried to, instead of running the fuel lines up the side of the boat and filling them in the side, which sometimes you have a little column that sticks out. The little towers, yeah. Right, the little mm -hmm. tower that you can kick your toe in and it always gets dirty. So what we did was we ran the fuel lines forward and then we supported them, I don't know if you can see that or not. We support them with a little custom aluminum bracket that yeah. keeps them from getting the belly so they don't try to back flush every time you try to fill it. In the front of the boat, there's a drainage pitch that goes all the way down to the bottom of the boat to the back. And then this is actually gonna become the water tank in the bow. We're just checking sure nothing's leaking at this point. This is actually our fish box. If you look at it, you can see that the drain is actually cut, the flange is cut, and we put a recess in there to try to get the drain as low as possible. Yeah. Fuel tanks are in, they're about 103, 104 gallons a piece. Four pound density foam all the way around them, and then we glass the tops of them so no water can get into the foam. These are the new EPA fittings. So basically your vent that you used to see on the sides of the boat are now just going into the gas cap itself. Um, it takes about six to eight percent of the gas capacity out, but keeps the government happy. So this okay. is, and the rum runner, this is basically the area where the head would be. So the head's in this back corner. Uh, vanity would be here and anything else you wanted to put up in the front of the boat. This is where that big door would swing open. It's a large, looks like a very large space looking at it, it through here. Right, well what's not here is the wall that's right here. If you remember on the other one, you opened the door and all the electronics were accessible. Right. That's what goes right here. So the head is really right about here, but there's still a lot of space. <laughs> if you notice on the sides of the coring, you'll see uh, PS4, PS5, PS6. Right. All the core is cut with a CNC machine. So it's actually labeled into the core. So when the boat goes in, because these hulls are completely infused, they get placed in order of imprint, and then they get infused a little nicer, cleaner. Yeah, you can see all the, all the foam cut is, exactly. is done nicely, and you have a bit like of a 45 here. Right. At the end, for those of you guys that aren't familiar with the infusion, that, you know, if they were to leave this edge squared, you'd likely end up with a little bubble, a little gap there, a void of some sort. So cutting that at a slight angle allows it to get that nice tight fit when they infuse it, which everything does look, you know, perfectly nice and clean. And that, that's basically one of those boat in a box correct. scenarios, right? Correct. So yeah, that's honestly from what we've seen out there, that's, that's the cleanest and nicest way to do it. Um, basically everything comes CNC cut, as he was mentioning. They have numbers to where everything goes. They have a set of plans. They lay it out. They infuse it, and everything is is perfect. I assume you have basically no waste at that point. No you waste. Know, which is boat a huge comes benefit. a little lighter, and as I showed you, the hull sides on a an infused boat with no structural support, I can't really move that side yeah. wall. On a yeah, hand laid boat, you'd be able to swallow it. Yeah. Uh, we run the gas tanks forward, as I said. Then we cut an access hole here. This is the only area we're not using for storage or anything else because if you can see it, it's not very much left. It's too there. small. Yeah. Right. So we drain it into the bilge so no water can get hold there. I hate places that will hold water, it just doesn't work for me. The deck comes down and gets plexused on top of every flat surface you see all the way throughout. Stringers and top of the lids of the boxes. We actually powder coat our gas tanks. Uh, at all the boats we built at midnight, we just did chromium zinc and I thought powder coating is a little bit better finish for them that should make them last a little bit longer. Looks As I nice. said, they're foamed in with four pound foam all the way around, all three sides. And then we come back in and we lay fiberglass right up to the edge. So in theory, no water should be able to get past it, which is kind of cool. This is the back wall of the head compartment. So this white hose you see is actually coming through for the head. So that'll go to a poopy tank that's right there that's about <laughs> nine gallons. And then the rest of this back is all open bilge. How far do you actually have from the bilge? Seven feet. Oh, so this is all open through All here? open, yeah. Really? The, the poopy oh, wow. tank is only about that big where my foot is. The rest of it's all bilge. Wow. Okay. Um, these are the two little boxes that we had extra storage. Remember I told you up front that we had some storage, but it was so small, it wasn't worth dealing with. I didn't want to have to remove a seat, so we made the floor pick up. So on the rum runner, I'll show you how that whole floor picks up, but those are those two boxes. We can either use them as storage, or we can macerate them and make them a fish box, whatever you'd prefer. Okay. Uh, uh, newer design back here. We've taken the bilge pumps. We had made our own little sump pump that was about three inches deep. 
and then we decided we didn't want to carry that extra water that was below the sump, so we actually cut through the sump, mounted the bilge pumps, and then we made the float switches adjustable. So you can actually control exactly how much water when your float switch activates as far as a hard water alarm or when it's going to turn on. This is access door. There'll be a door here. One says uh, fish box, the other one says poopy. And what you're designed to get to is those two stainless steel bronze through holes in the back of the boat. Overboard discharge for the holding tank and for the fish box. Little pieces in the sides, a little bit more expensive, not a lot. But I don't like fittings that come through with the hose come straight off and then it has to make a bend. So we pay a little bit extra to get a 90 degree stainless steel through hole fitting in the back of the boat. And then anything that has any kind of pressure, we always cut the core out. So we've already we've ground the core out and mounted it right to solid fiberglass. Okay. Much less chance of it ever coming loose. Um, we hide that, that hose. That hose is completely hidden. There's no tire apps holding it. So if you have to replace it, you undo one and it pulls right out. But we made a little uh, pocket right there that the hose kind of hides underneath. So when you look in the bilge, it's crystal clean. We add a single transom knee right in the middle. And those two pockets that you see on both sides are trim tab pockets. They'll fit K-planes or we can put zip wakes in them or Lenkos, whatever you'd prefer. And if you look at the very side of the boat, you'll see dark spot is solid fiberglass. The green is foam coring and then there's more fiberglass on the inside. So it's a pretty simple system. Uh, it was designed to be simple because I'm a simple guy. <laughs> vent on this side is for the holding tank. You have to have a vent. You want overboard, right. you want inside. On the water tank, we vent it inside the boat because we don't need to cut a hole through the outside of the boat. It's just water, it's for not water. a big deal. And that's it. All right, very nice. So now they know what it looks like below the deck. Yeah. No, now you've seen that, we're actually gonna go see one out on the water so you can see what the final product is if you have not seen one just yet. Guys, we are on a Power Play Power Boats 30 foot rum runner, correct? This is the first one actually with the joystick system on it. So we have it right here at Hillsborough Beach. It's quite a bit of a chop and current running through. The twin V8 300s by Mercury are keeping us exactly in place. So, first time they activated on this boat, and I can say it's definitely working well. We have not moved an inch from here. So as you can see, this boat has a lot of options here towards the transom, one being a large transom space for you to be able to walk out here. If you're using the sandbar or at the sandbar, you have a ladder connection here. You actually have another one. So depending where you want it, you have access for both points. Full bench here along the transom as well, which actually you can open up and get out of the way, which I'll show you right here. Very easy to do. And you can even remove this if you'd like, that full access way down the center. Check this out right here. We have this back box which i was curious how you get in there with this rear facing seat but check this out how this is so perfectly built raise this up you got large gas shocks back there so it's easy to bring up and it gives you access to these boxes here in the cockpit area you got a both port and starboard and then you have access to your bolts for your outboards out there there's no pumps or anything back in the transom area they're all in the bilge and that's it drop this thing back down you have the full seating but you also have perfect access to those boxes. Really nicely done. Let me open this hatch here so you can get a load of this. Beautifully finished. You can see the finish work underneath the hatch as well. Two gas shocks make it real easy to get up and out of the way. And I believe the bilge pumps are right under here, correct? So actually covered, recessed underneath. It allows the water, any water that was to make its way through here would easily work its way down into that. You got slants in both, dire both directions. So very nice and clean and offers you a tremendous amount of storage space under here. This is a Plastec Teak alternative, which is very nice to the touch. Actually walking barefoot on it and gives it a really Nice finish, retractable Yeti cooler, and a little live well. If you were to do a bit of fishing on here, you're able to keep some live bait. 
So this boat is a, has a nine foot beam to it, 103 gallon tanks, two of them poured in starboard. You have little knickknacks like this, which Tom does a great job integrating, jump in and out when you're at the dock. Then we'll work our way forward to the helm seats and this dash right here. So as Tom was mentioning, this was the first one with, with the Optimus 360 joystick. And we have, we have it engaged at the moment. Right now it's actually working tremendously. And we also have the Zip Wakes, which is pretty much an automated trim tab system. It does a lot of the work for you, which you know most people really don't know how to use trim tabs well. So when you're getting on plane, it actually drops them down to get the nose down quickly and then adjusts them upward as you go forward. You have twin Garmin MFDs look like 16 inch from here. Switch panel integrated into this matte wood finish. Check this out. You got some of your switches in there. Battery. Batteries. You see the house as well. And even put the nav lights in there if you're navigating at night. Up here, having that little red light on is the only thing that kind of glares back at you. So they hid that away so you don't have it. You have a nice polycarbonate enclosure here. Nice, large top providing tons of shade. This is a beautiful center console made for cruising, family cruising. And again, if you want to fish on any of these things, you can definitely do that. We're using uh, the helm seats for some storage right now, but really nice quality material. As you can see, thank you, Tom. Welcome. Adjustable, and again, you can jump up here and navigate this boat very easily see over the uh, console with no problem at all. Some of these boats, you know, have those large consoles, unless you're really tall or if there's a, you know, a female driving the boat, it might be a little bit shorter. It gets a little bit more difficult. The visibility here is, is actually phenomenal. You have some footrests down here, which also have the plastic material on them. And you have trash cans poured in starboard, which is extremely comfortable on a normal day out there. It's usually, a live well or something that gets jammed with trash, it's nice to have its dedicated spot. You have your fusion head unit here, JL Audio sound system throughout. And we'll work our way up towards the bow here. Let me open this thing up. Although the, the console is not tall while you're out here, you can see the amount of space you have down beneath. So you have a grab rail here that makes it easy to open close from the inside access to your rigging there underneath, which actually even has a teak accent to it to complement the dash. That's pretty cool. Easy to get to everything. Lock this up, close it up, get to handle your business. And you got plenty of headroom under here as well to stand up with no problem at all. This door opens this way as you can see. So if you are driving, it doesn't get in your way. Then you have one of the nicer lounge seats you'll probably ever see. And then you actually have an automated leg rest similar to your lazy boy at home. Retractable armrests, incredibly comfortable. I'm gonna, you got two independent units as well. So someone could have their legs up here and the other one could put their legs down there if they'd like. You got forward seating here, really nice backrest. Makes it very comfortable to sit up towards the bow. Plenty of padding on both sides. And then you can raise this thing up. Let me see where that Port side. is. Port side, here we go. Check that out. So it gives you plenty of storage, all on actuators here. And then you have a large fish box right underneath me here. So I'll crack open. Check that out. So no shortage of storage. Everything is very well finished, as you can see. Gives you plenty of room to throw everything out of the way and keep your deck nice and clear. See what we have here. Bit of access to this area here and your anchor locker if you want to get that out of the way. 
and we'll pop these out. Yeah, this is a client boat, so there's a dock line in the way. As you can see, your anchor perfectly secured in a spot specially made for it. You got a fresh water fill there on the port side, and then you got your fuel gas fills up here, which we have a video showing one of the power plays interior workings. You're gonna see how they ran the fuel fills up towards the bow so you don't have to have the towers going alongside the liner underneath the cap. So it keeps a nice clean finish and very nicely done. For you guys that are interested in information in the power play, you can reach out to us and we'll connect you uh, to either Tom or Chelsea. Reach out to them on their page as well as always. A beautiful boat, as you can see, it definitely turns heads one from the exterior and you'll see from the interior work that they build a quality boat inside and out. That's what we wanted to accomplish today and I think we did that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed everything we brought to you. Uh, much more coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you have not already. Thank you guys for joining. We'll see you here again soon at Center Consoles Only.